Hello, bonjour à tous. Thank you for joining us for today's Tourism Town Hall. Before we start, just a reminder that we will have time at the end of this session for some Q&As. If you have any questions that you've not already sent us in advance, please submit them through the Q&A interface, which you can access at the bottom of your screen. We'll pick them up during the course of the presentations. Now I'd like to introduce our moderator, Dave McKenna, President of Banff Jasper Collection by Pursuit and the Tourism Industry Association of Canada's board chair. Over to you, Dave. Thank you very much. And hello, everybody out in video land. <clears throat> it is wonderful to be here today. I'm super pleased to be your moderator uh, for today's Tourism Town Hall. Um, as uh, I think most of you know, I live and work here in beautiful Banff. Uh, and uh, we are just starting to pick back up and see some folks uh, start to come out and visit us. So today's, uh, as a note, today's session will be recorded and will be made available to you uh, on the TIAC website. Uh, the Tourism Town Hall series uh, is an event partnership between the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, or TIAC, and Destination Canada, and our host partner, Travel Alberta. Uh, this Tourism uh, Town Halls will provide an opportunity for small, medium, and, and large organizations to engage um, with the, uh, the province and share information, discuss policy work, and hear uh, pertinent to this year what is available for COVID-19, relief and recovery resources, as well as uh, just generally what to expect uh, coming up as we uh, emerge from here. Uh, town halls allow owner operators to provide firsthand input, and so it's really important that you engage with us today I keep looking down to read my script. I'll be doing this throughout the day because I've been told I have to. Uh, but please, uh, you know, use the media. This is a great tool, Zoom. I'm sure we've all gotten used to it. Send in your questions, uh, send in your comments. It'll be moderated throughout and being brought through to the panel throughout the, the session today. Um, so uh, without any further ado, uh, we'll be hearing from leading tourism organizations on the efforts being made to support tourism uh, in Alberta, but as well as across Canada. So for today, we are pleased that the Tourism Industry Association of Canada and our national partners at Destination Canada and Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada are here. And thank you to Travel Alberta for hosting this session and the Tourism Industry Association of Alberta for joining us. It's a lot of association. I'd like to extend a special thank you to all of our audience for spending time with us here today and for submitting your questions in advance to the group. As mentioned, you can also submit questions during the session via, uh, via the Q&A, uh, and depending on our time, we'll get to as many of these questions as we can. Today, uh, we are going to start the session by asking Charlotte Bell, President and CEO of the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, or TIAC, to say a few words. Following Charlotte, we'll have greetings from uh, Shelley Gromas, who is a uh, Vice President, Industry Development for Travel Alberta. And then we'll be joined by Darren Reeder, who is a board advisor for the newly formed uh, Tourism, um, Tourism Industry Association of Alberta. Uh, and then uh, we will have Keith Henry also give us greetings on behalf, uh, Keith is the President and CEO of uh, the Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada. And his other street cred is he's a friend of mine, uh, and uh, Keith will give us some greetings. And then after that, uh, we'll have a short presentation from Cookie Boyle, who is the Executive Director of Global Content uh, for Destination Canada. Uh, and, and if you're not completely spellbound at, at that point, uh, we will then enter into a uh, town hall session uh, where we will uh, then take uh, those questions and have a real open discussion. So we're hoping to engage everybody in that. Uh, so, uh, with all that being said, I'll now hand things over to Charlotte Bell, President and CEO of TIAC. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I'm really happy to be here with you today to discuss TIAC's initiatives and provide a, a recap of our advocacy work on behalf of Canada's tourism sector and, and the visitor economy. But before I begin, um, let's hear from the Minister of Economic Development and Official Languages, the Honourable Melanie Jolie. Video, please. Bonjour tout le monde. Hi, everybody. We know the tourism sector is really hard hit by the pandemic and the economic crisis. On sait le secteur touristique est vraiment très affecté par la pandémie et la crise économique. Et c'est exactement pourquoi on est là pour vous. 
we're there to help you because we heard from you that you needed support to pay your employees, pay rent, and have access to liquidities. That's why we came up with a wage subsidy until the end of August, uh, a rent relief program, and also some liquidity to the SIBA account, the $40,000 loan. If you're still falling through the cracks, please come and see us uh, through the regional development agencies from ACOA in Atlantic Canada to Western Diversification in the West. Donc, si vous avez besoin d'aide et vous tombez encore entre les mailles du filet, venez nous voir uh, via les agences de développement économique régional de l'APK dans l'Est jusqu'à DEC au Québec. Keep it up, guys. Merci. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, I want to welcome you to our town hall series. And I know this is tourism week and, and I appreciate that this feels very different um, from what we're used to. We usually come together at this time to celebrate our accomplishments over the last year and ring in uh, the high season. And of course, uh, certainly the circumstances and the mood are quite different. But having said that, it's important for us to get together and and it's important also for TIAC to talk to you about the work that we're doing on your behalf and for you to know that we're still there in your corner. We've been there since day one and we're going to continue to be there for you. Um, so we're starting to turn our attention towards recovery. We've really focused on relief over the last uh, couple of months. And we're going to be talking about all of those things today. So I'm just going to ask Julie to, to turn the slide. Thank you. All right, there are some people uh, who may not be completely um, familiar with what TIAC does and what our mission and vision are. And so I thought I'd start with telling you, you know, our mission is to be the voice for Canada's tourism industry and improve its global competitiveness as an international destination through leadership and advocacy. And our vision is to lead you, this important Canadian tourism industry, to be the most competitive in the world. Um, next slide, please. I think the, ah, there we go. So in normal times, we're primarily focused on advocacy work to help strengthen the industry. Um, that's already a very strong industry, of course. Um, but of course, um, these are really refocused our, uh, our advocacy efforts on dealing with this current situation. So what I wanna, I wanna walk you through a little bit of the, the work that we're doing right now. So our current focus really has been um, on four things. Gathering information. So consulting industry through surveys, phone calls, and communications to inform on the sector's current needs and outlooks to prepare for losses in the upcoming season. I have to tell you, I know that you're getting all kinds of requests to do surveys and provide information. This information is invaluable for us. It helps us do advocacy work. Um, you know, when you go to government and you say, we have a problem with this, we have a problem with the program, um, or the industry is, is really suffering, it helps us to have real-time data. And, and that's a great role that you have been playing. And so I encourage you to keep doing that um, because it really has helped us doing our advocacy. And of course, we are working with government. We're doing daily calls with government ministers at finance, economic development, which represents tourism, uh, small business also, uh, global affairs. We've had numerous discussions with the Bank of Canada. So these are ongoing calls on a daily basis um, every week. And we continue to talk about the importance of tourism and making sure that they know where the gaps are and what we can do, and, and that's the third point really is, we know there are a number of programs out there, there are important programs, we asked for all of them, but we know they are stop gaps. And there are gaps in those programs, there still are gaps. We've worked on a number of them, but we are focused on making sure 
that more businesses are able to access the funds and the programs that are there. So again, going back to my first point, so important for us to get your feedback and, and even specific examples. And I can't tell you how, how important those have been uh, to help us fill some of those gaps. I know the work is not done and we continue to do that, but please continue to, to give us that information. And of course, we are planning for success post COVID-19. You know, as, as dire as the situation is, this will end at some point. Um, <clears throat> there's gonna be a gradual recovery and we want government to focus on recovery uh, starting now. And so we are very much focused on that and I'm gonna be talking a bit more about that in a few minutes. Um, next slide, please. Okay, the next slide is not, ah, oh, there we go. So there are a number of government support programs for tourism businesses, and, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with them, and this is not an exhaustive list, but this is a listing of uh, a number of those programs. And these have shifted and changed over time, of course, with our feedback and other organizations saying, listen, this is great, but that's not gonna work. We need to make some changes. Uh, you know, the wage subsidy has been a really important program. I know there are still some of you who cannot access this. Um, this is a very important program. We just uh, learned a couple of weeks ago that the government has agreed to extend this. I'm hoping that they will extend it even further into 2021, and we're gonna continue to advocate for that. Um, and I am hearing stories from uh, seasonal businesses who still can't access this. So I am working on this. We are all in this together and we wanna make sure as many of you can actually take advantage of these programs. Uh, the CBA account, I think many people have been able to take advantage of this. Please let us know if you're having difficulty accessing this or other programs. The Regional Development Agency support uh, was just launched probably 10 days ago. We found that there were some issues with that program. We've been working really hard with government to try and address those issues. So again, please, please tell us uh, what is working and what is not working. And what is most important for us is knowing the details of what's not working for you so that we can take that forward and make changes. Um, next slide, please. All right, so as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we are planning for recovery. This is very, very important, of course. And I'm sure that many of you are seeing that other countries are already well on their way uh, with recovery plans, um, and we're gonna have to compete with them at some point. The other thing is we've got to get our act together and we have to make sure that government understands this is an economic driver. It, is, it should be a priority sector. And we need to start making plans now so that we can have a well-planned recovery. Um, and we know that you know, we were the first hit, we were the hardest hit, and it's gonna be a little bit longer for us to come out of this uh, than other sectors. But still, uh, we are emphasizing this is a $102 billion sector supporting 1.8 million jobs. And it's really important that we come together that we have a coordinated approach, a collaborative approach, and that, um, that we're able to come out of this. So we at TIAC put together an industry-led policy committee um, probably seven or eight weeks ago, and we've been meeting on a weekly basis. We have come up with a recovery plan uh, that we are gonna be launching next week, and we have a whole communication plan. It's actually quite bolstered to make sure that we are getting media attention and we're getting the government's attention to the importance of focusing now on recovery and having a collaborative approach between the federal government and the provinces and the industry. So we continue also to partner with Destination Canada and our regional partners to monitor re recovery trends and plan for more domestic tourism support. And of course, ensuring that tourism businesses sustain uncertain times and are able to continue their operations. 
So this is our focus right now. I'm excited to, un to unveil um, a recovery plan next week and to work with all of you and all of our partners, our national associations who we work very closely with, as well as all the provincial and territorial associations. Our big message here is Canada cannot afford to lose the tourism industry. The visitor economy is hugely important to Canada and we've got to work together and make sure our voice is heard loud and clear. So stay tuned to our website and our social media challenge uh, channels for our report. The other thing I want to tell you is as part of this, we are going to be relaunching our um, toursofmatters.ca, which is a push politics tool. This is a really important tool and, and a useful tool because it allows stakeholders to actually log in, put in their postal code, and actually be able to send a letter to their own MP asking for support, telling them how important this sector is, and, and we actually can get uh, responses from MPs. And we're going to be talking to a number of ministers and, and MPs from all uh, political parties as part of this strategy. So I'm looking forward to this, and, and we're, you're going to be hearing more about uh, the strategy, and, and we're going to be reaching out for you for support. Um, next slide, please. All right, so <clears throat> my last point here is please stay informed. We are putting out daily communication to make sure that you know what the tools are that are available to you. Um, we're also uh, talking about provincial and territorial reopening plans. Um, we're on a constant basis and a daily basis providing information about government announcements. And I know you sometimes you get this information from different sources, and that's a great thing. Uh, the more information is out there, the better. Um, we have it all in one place, so please make sure that if you haven't signed up for a newsletter, please do so. And of course, go to our website. We have more information there, and follow us on social media. And I just want you to know, in closing, um, we're here for you. We're going to continue to be for, uh, here for you. And uh, we want to make sure that we're all working together because at the end of the day, we're all in this together. So thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions. Take care. Hello everyone and welcome to Virtual Tourism Week. As much as this is not how we all wanted to gather to celebrate the visitor economy, I hope that first and foremost you and yours are healthy and staying well. I truly wish that we could be meeting at the Royal Terrell Museum in Jasper or Waterton Lake Park rather than online today. I am missing many of the places that our province offers the world and offers Canada, especially this time of year. My name is Clark Gruy and I am the chair of Meetings Being Business Canada. These are peculiar days for all of us as we make our way through the shock of the COVID-19 crisis. The business events segment has been shut down entirely for the past two months as our leaders in health and government struggle to find the right balance between safety and the economy. Ensuring that Canada is once again a beacon of safety and freedom while welcoming the world back to our country is a delicate and important balance. Meetings Being Business Canada, in partnership with TIAC, have focused our advocacy efforts in the past months towards providing a platform for elevating the awareness of economic and social importance of business events to government, as well as the fact that Canadian professional standards for hosting conferences, conventions, exhibitions, and corporate meetings are truly world-class. In fact, many of our industry leaders are working tirelessly across the country on task forces to develop protocol recommendations for reopening the country to business events. These leaders continue to fight to inform the regulatory bodies of the measures that can quickly be put into place for an industry that can control its delegates and their interactions. This is what we do all the time. Meetings Me Business Canada is encouraging all of our industry partners to support our efforts 
by communicating with local governments and helping to spread the message about supporting the efforts to reopen the meetings and events industry. That said, today we'd like to recognize all of you and the contributions that Alberta makes to Canada's amazing visitor economy. You're the people that not only rely on this industry, but who are the people who make the industry happen. So thank you for all that you do. I wanna leave you with a video that may seem nostalgic now. This was developed last year to elevate awareness of how business events drive economic well-being for Canada. Now it reminds us of the importance of bringing these events back to our country so that they can once again stimulate the economy, create jobs, and engineer opportunities for Canadian businesses, Canadians, and our visitors. Happy Tourism Week, everyone. making big policy decisions in our country, it's really important that we are mindful of how big of a role the meetings and the convention industry has across our country. At Marriott, meetings and events represent over 40% of our business. Meetings and events are, are critical to the fabric of who we are and what we do. Next year, we're going to host the World Aquaculture North America Conference. Yeah, we're hoping to bring one of the largest groups ever to St. John's, Newfoundland, to bring 1,500 people to your home province. What it means for the local economy, the restaurants, the hotels, all the local craft stores, the bakeries. It's a win-win-win. Currently, I'm probably sitting around 35 to 40 percent within Canadian product, and my goal is to get to 70 to 80 percent sourced locally. Our business has really grown because of how chefs have embraced the Eat Local, Eat Canadian movement. There's been a huge influx in our industry in growing produce for restaurants, for events, so our business of growing vegetables is expanding every year. A lot of people who don't even know that they're part of the tourism business or the meetings business are experiencing great economic benefits because of meetings and conferences that take place here in our city. When these conventions come in, it allows us that opportunity to bank some money, to upgrade, to do those changes that bring more opportunity for us. I can't stress enough what difference that makes. The meeting business is very, very crucial to our, to our industry. When we first opened our first business, we had like 12 employees and now we have in excess of 200. All right, um, I want to thank our town hall sponsors today. Meetings Mean Business Canada, Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada, WestJet and Air Canada. Um, and I apologize, uh, I somehow got muted. I was supposed to do this earlier and we had all the logos, but you know, these are the small things that happen uh, when we're going virtual. So there you go, uh, over to you Dave. and uh, Minister Jolie for sending in uh, that video and a great uh, thank you to all of our sponsors that allow us to do these events. Uh, now I'm very pleased to uh, ask Shelley Gromas, Vice President of Industry Development from Travel Alberta to say a few words. Thank you, Dave, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. To start off, I would like to introduce a video from the Honorable Tanya Furr, Minister of Economic Development, Trade and Tourism here in Alberta. Tourism has been hit hard by COVID-19. The tourism industry is the fourth largest employment sector in the province. Alberta's tourism industry is a key contributor to our economy and it creates jobs and revenue that so many communities across our province depend on. We are going to keep developing our 10-year tourism strategy that will include three phases of our plan to help the tourism sector. These phases will focus on response and providing the sector with immediate relief now, such as our abatement of the tourism levy, 
relaunch and supporting the sector through recovery and rebuilding and positioning the sector for growth. Tourism will look very different this year and we will have a very different summer than any before. But Albertans are always here for each other. Tourism tells the story of our province. It shows the beauty of our land and our people. Each of you are a part of that story and together we still have a lot to tell. So I'm so pleased that we were still able to go ahead with the town hall this year as we had previously planned. And I wanna say thank you to all of our national partners for coming on board and joining us here today. We greatly appreciate that. If we could move to the next slide. Travel Alberta has certainly been doing a lot of partner outreach across our province to get a sense of how the COVID-19 situation has impacted businesses. We've also conducted our own research across the province to get a sense again on how you have been uh, affected by the current situation. And we have heard back that almost two thirds of operators are certainly concerned that they will not be able to open this summer season. Based on all of the feedback that we've been hearing from our industry partners, we have made some strategic shifts going forward. First of all, I'm really pleased that we've been able to increase our funding support directly to Alberta industry partners this year. We certainly heard from you that you are having a lot of challenges with cash flow and liquidity this year. Some of you have definitely been able to take advantage of the federal programs as Charlotte outlined, and that's wonderful. But we do know that you will need some additional support as well. We internally at Travel Alberta have reduced our international investment and we have pivoted those investments towards more local, regional and domestic campaign efforts as travel would be permitted in the province and across the country. We've also taken a look at our organization and we're ensuring responsible management of all areas within our business and have reduced our team complement accordingly. If we could move forward, please. Through this, we have developed a brand new Alberta Rebound strategy based on the current needs of our business. It is our goal to get our visitor economy back in Alberta to the place it was in 2019. We are looking at a three-phased strategy approach. It is built out in response, restart, and rebuild, again, based on the needs of our industry. We want to help mitigate your losses and help you rebuild as appropriate when the time is right. We can move on, please. In this strategy, as I mentioned, the three areas of respond, restart, and rebuild, we are looking at a number of objectives in how we can support destination development, destination promotional efforts, overall destination management support of the ongoing 10-year tourism strategy, which will be critical in the long-term rebuilding of our province and ensuring business continuity within our own organization to help support you, our industry partners. You are our greatest asset and we need you and your businesses to ensure that we have the necessary supply to be able to meet future demand. We'll move next, please. In the development of our strategy, we've, we've created a signals framework. This is similar to what you've seen from Destination Canada, and it does align with the province's relaunch strategy and the three phases that they've outlined. As we're moving from the response phase into the restart phase, we are focused on that community local aspect and travel within the province right now. We will move into the interprovincial travel and domestic travel later on as schedule and time permits. Next, please. Again, as I mentioned, we have a commitment to really wanting to help support our industry partners. We know that you're looking for financial investments to help on both your product development side, especially in a new COVID environment. You may need to make changes to your business based on some of the new guidelines and protocols that are currently in place. You've also shared with us that you are really concerned about getting customers back to your business and that you've expressed interest in having Travel Alberta support you in your marketing efforts. This is definitely an area that we want to play. So we are going to be reopening our cooperative investment program here next week. 
to ensure that we can provide some investments to you to help adjust your business and the product experience that you offer, as well as helping you to restart your marketing efforts. We could go forward, please. In conjunction with that, we're also going to be looking at launching an inspirational campaign along the lines of worth the wait. You're gonna see a variety of different uh, taglines come out, worth exploring, worth the trek, worth the journey. This program is designed to help stimulate and create travel throughout the province. It's also designed so that if we need to go back and forth in terms of recovery efforts as travel permits, we can adjust our messaging accordingly. The key message is that we want to support our industry partners with some messaging that you can use. We want you to know that we want to drive inspirational travel in the province this summer to help you as you are restarting and reopening your business. We recognize the importance of getting customers to you to get your cash register starting to ring again. We could go forward, please. And of course, as always, we want to stay connected with you. I hope that everyone has subscribed to our Connections e-newsletter, and if you haven't, please sign up for it. And of course, our industry hub at industry.travelalberta.com is the key resource for all information. We are gathering all of the federal programs and funding out there that's available right now, and we are putting it in one place for you on the industry hub where you can find these resources easily for your business. Again, please keep in touch with us and follow us. Watch for updates on the strategy as activities continue to unfold. And I want to say thank you for this opportunity. Back to you, Dave. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Shelley. Uh, keep the ball rolling uh, here in Alberta. I'd like to ask uh, Darren Reed who's uh, currently a board advisor to the Tourism Industry Association of Alberta uh, to provide us a short greeting. Welcome, Darren. Thank you, Dave, and good afternoon, everyone. And on behalf of the Tourism Industry Association of Alberta, I wanna thank each and every one of you for the important role you play in delivering authentic experiences to Canadians and to visitors around the world. Uh, if you are unaware that there was a Provincial Tourism Industry Association, that might to the newness of the effort. Uh, in fact, the organization was only incorporated in October, um, and we are one of the last provinces to have created one. So this is a great achievement, something to celebrate during Tourism Week. And I want to thank TIAC uh, for your uh, measured support in getting us to this point. So thank you. Um, what I'd like to do is just uh, walk you through a bit of the evolution of the organization and talk about a few of the things that we're currently working on. So first of all, the association came to be in response to a desire for a coordinated provincial industry voice. And as part of a shared industry effort to support the government's new aim of creating a $20 billion industry by the year 2030. As it turns out, a pandemic crisis will help galvanize your sense of purpose and the prioritization of business issues that matter most during a time of crisis. Tayo's membership spans a majority of the provincial tourism sector and the organization is supported by a 10-member board from sectors such as lodging, retail, food and beverage, indigenous, uh, and tourism industry associations, including destination marketing organizations. What I'd like to say is that there are so many tourism-related associations in Alberta that play invaluable roles, but Taya was intentional when it created the Provincial Association to ensure that it was an industry of industries associations that we would amplify, not duplicate, the research and advocacy efforts of so many other organizations that are doing good work in the space. Uh, if we could move to the second slide, please. The development of a 10-year tourism strategy came at a time the province was already seriously looking at ways to economically diversify. The pandemic crisis has simply magnified areas where provincial policy needs to be better supported so private sector interests to invest are encouraged more. A few examples of the types of structural challenges that must be overcome to ensure the full potential of the tourism sector moves forward include removing impediments that prevent entrepreneurs and investors from developing tourism and outdoor recreation opportunities on provincial crown lands and in provincial parks. A need to strengthen opportunities for regional economic development in Alberta, focusing on areas that already have high concentration of export ready product. The importance of stemming economic leakage 
from the province by ensuring that foreign owned businesses that operate in the digital space gener and generate income in Alberta pay their fair share of taxes in Alberta and the need to ensure sustainable and predictable funding for Travel Alberta and that there are additional provincial supports in place for uh, research and regional data collection to make sure that we are making informed business decisions. As you know, there is no industry that has suffered the consequence of this economic downturn more than tourism. Alberta, if you're unaware, boasts over 23,000 tourism businesses. Approximately half of this amount are seasonal businesses. And about half of those are also independently owned operators. And among those that have suffered the greatest challenges with ensuring liquidity. Taya's advocacy efforts have focused on ensuring the survivability of the industry and its ability to reposition for the recovery. We have responded to three considerations in mind, three theme areas, and these really uh, reflect what Shelley has already shared. The first consideration is the preservation of businesses. There needs to be, absolutely needs to be, adequate financial supports in place to shelter in businesses, the workforce, and households during the worst of this pandemic crisis. Clearly, many of the financial support programs that have been introduced and are working may need to be extended for far longer than is currently prescribed. Consideration two is protection. Businesses must have tools to ensure the liquidity until such time that the government reopens all segments of the economy and the market begins to move again under its own power. Unfortunately, the accrual of deferred taxes and fees that have been mounting over the past couple months act as a drag on future cash flow of all businesses and will have or force many businesses to choose between whether they hire back staff buy inventory or begin to start paying for some of these accrued costs. This could put some, some businesses under. Taya believes that much more will need to be done to defer these costs and or abate some portion of others. Consideration number three is promotion. As we are just starting to reopen the economy now, there may be several investment stimulus measures that are required to kickstart the economy. In the same way you might use jumper cables on a vehicle when it's been sitting at 40 below for two months. Uh, this could include concepts such as government subsidized vacation experiences with discounts and vouchers for items like dining and lodging. If you didn't see this, yesterday Japan announced a very ambitious $1.3 trillion yen program to provide subsidized vacations in an effort to revive their domestic tourism industry. Other considerations could be tourism infrastructure projects that generate employment and drive incremental spending within established economic corridors. Reinstatement of the Alberta Investor Tax Credit and creating a provincially backed uh, tourism opportunities fund to incentivize risk taking and new product development within key areas of Alberta's tourism industry. In conclusion, I would like to say the Tourism Week is not only a celebration of the achievements and resilience of our sector in this unprecedented time of uncertainty, but it serves as a rally point, a reminder that government that as the fourth largest economic contributor, tourism is one of the greenest, most renewable sectors that can help support the province's repositioning for the future. On the final slide, thank you. Uh, and I just want to thank you for this opportunity to be a part of today's town hall. This is a tremendous event at a very needed time to bring our industry together. And if you have any questions about the association, my contact details are up there. I would be pleased to chat with any of you anytime. Thank you so much. That's great. Thank you very much, Darren. And uh, some great ideas. And I know that uh, a lot of those are already being echoed on a national level. So I think. As Canadians, we're all in this together and uh, we're here to help. Uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce uh, Keith Henry uh, from the Indigenous Tourism Industry Association of Canada, uh, one of the greatest new, um, uh, you know, uh, industries within the, the tourism segment within the tourism industry. Uh, Keith, uh, what do you have for us today? Yeah, well, uh, thanks for having me here, and it's an honor and a pleasure to talk with everyone amidst these uh, very challenging times. So first of all, I want to acknowledge a number of partners on the call, such as yourself at TIAC and, of course, Travel Alberta, and good to see Darren and many others on this call, of course, Destination Canada. But I'm certainly going to be um, uh, quite, uh, hopefully, a little more um, um, candid in the challenges we're facing um, for Indigenous tourism. 
and Alberta Indigenous tourism businesses are, are feeling certainly the economic impacts of COVID-19 as much as anyone. So I'll try and share a bit of insight into how we're addressing the need of Indigenous tourism, what we're seeing right now in Alberta and so forth. So I'll go to the first slide. Um, here's what we know so far right now for Indigenous business tourism businesses in Canada. And, and the backdrop of this is there's about 1,875 businesses that we've been tracking as a national organization that are Indigenous owned and operated, whether it's hotels, restaurants, whatever the uh, type of business it is. Within Alberta itself, it's about 140 businesses, give or take. And of that, about 90 of them are, are, are market ready. And some of them are very large operations. You know, some of you have been to Grey Eagle Resort Casino. Uh, you know, obviously some of you have been to Painted Warrior. It's an outdoor adventure, you know, Jasper Tour Company. There's a lot of different types of tourism, indigenous businesses we see. But on the ground, what we're seeing is about 53% of our businesses say they won't make it through COVID-19. It's a substantial destruction of our industry right now. And um, it's one that we've been pushing very um, um, uh, uh, out to federal and provincial governments and so forth. It's very true of Alberta. I don't think it'll be any different. It's a, it's a substantial issue uh, for all of us. Um, we know that right now we've already lost, give or take, about 5,800 jobs uh, as of the end of April out of 40,000. Uh, and we know this month it's even worse and it's going to continue to gain that because there simply is not a visitor economy as it stands right now. And there's various levels of reopening. And, and although Alberta is reopening, it's certainly, we, it's not the same across the, the country, which makes it challenging for us as a national organization to address these sorts of things. Um, gaming and accommodation are the hardest hit sectors. And for Alberta, there are some very large indigenous gaming facilities, and it certainly has a big economic hit in terms of not just the revenue, but the, also the impacts of the loss of jobs for a lot of the local indigenous community uh, itself. So uh, pretty substantial. So we know from indigenous tourism across the country, we're losing about 280 million per month in direct GDP uh, starting in May. So it's a pretty bleak challenge for indigenous uh, uh, tourism across Canada. So go to the next slide. Um, so we are trying uh, as a, a national organization, we work with partners. So for example, we've been working with indigenous tourism. Alberta is our provincial representative there on the ground. Uh, we've done a few things. We've, we've created a revised action plan. So we immediately tried to restructure our current business plan nationally. Uh, part of which was putting more money into some of the things I'm going to talk about shortly. Um, and of course, downsizing some staffing, all the sorts of things we need to do to redirect resources. Um, we've been doing ongoing research and surveying of our own members and their and specific businesses. Shortly, we'll be releasing a Conference Board of Canada report uh, that will continue to reinforce the economic uh, outlook we saw at the uh, that we released in the beginning of April. And uh, despite that, we've been still trying to create uh, some positive, of course, news. And and some of you may have seen recently. Things like our Indigenous Chef Cook-Off. There's uh, in Alberta some great Indigenous culinary representatives. And we did a, a new video series called Virtually Yours. And I want to show that just to show that with, despite these challenges, we are trying to share some positive information and, and, and rebuild for the future. So I'll go to the next slide and run the video. Time can be a test. A test of our character, our nature, our spirit. For thousands of years and countless generations, our people have survived the tests of hardship and separation. And we will survive these times as well. And so will you. Although we dream of the times when we can explore and discover and experience, right now, we patiently pray for health and healing and for wisdom to guide our decisions. Our future is grown from our past. And when the time comes to reconnect, we will do so with a stronger sense of community, we will be united in our desire to engage in experiences that bring us together. Our story awaits, and when the time is right, we welcome you to share in it. 
virtually yours, the Indigenous Tourism Experiences of Canada. So go to the next slide. I think um, uh, for whatever it's worth to some of you, I know there's many people watching right now, you know, uh, viruses have a very specific and very traumatic effect to a lot of our communities, um, as they would with anyone. And doesn't I don't want to overstate the issue, but um, you know the history of Canada has not been kind in terms of viruses. And so, the issue that we face an added layer of challenges for some of our communities in Alberta as well as across this country is there's uh, some potential growing conflict where our Indigenous tourism businesses want to reopen as reopening can happen. However community safety is is pushing that they just want to close the nation's territory to activities and adventure. This will be an issue in Alberta. It's not one that we've seen a lot yet, but I suspect there will be areas where Indigenous communities will not want to allow visitors in at, at any level. So it's something that we need to be paying attention to, and I don't have the answer, but I just want to say that there's a lot of historical context to the impacts of viruses on Indigenous communities and, and the devastation that it created that adds to this issue for uh, COVID-19 and the impacts for community health. So what we've been doing to try and, I guess, help uh, address issues, uh, some of you may have seen we were doing online uh, webinars, uh, one about every two weeks with a number of our businesses and then, of course, partners join and watch. Uh, we've been trying to uh, keep a national alignment with our provincial and territorial partners, such as Indigenous Tourism Alberta and many others that we have that we're working to uh, sort of address these challenges and solutions. We are also, along with TIAC and Travel Alberta, many others, uh, we're on ongoing dialogue on a daily basis with the federal government. And for us specifically, it's with Indigenous Services Canada, uh, uh, Innovation Science, and of course, Economic Development. And of course, there's things like the, the regional development agencies. And you know there is a variety of programs out there, but we're facing really significant gaps in terms of how our businesses will survive this. And um, you know each of which are consistent with some of just tourism generally. Some of which were, are continuing to evolve. You know, uh, for I'll give you an example. Wage subsidy is really important. I've heard people speak about that, but people may not realize our on-reserve businesses didn't even qualify till two weeks ago. So these are significant. Some of these are large employers. Some of these are hotels uh, that are owned by the community that, that were deemed not an eligible legal entity based on the legislation. So these are things that we've been able to address and tackle. So that's a good thing, but we're still trying. Those are gaps that, we, that we're continuing to try and work our way through, just to give you some examples. I'll go to the next slide. Um, we've now created, the, the most important thing we've done is we've created for our sector a stimulus grant program We've said since uh, since the beginning of April, there's three things that we need in Indigenous tourism, and it'll be true in Alberta. That we need short-term cash liquidity, so much like what Travel Alberta showed with their $5,000 development uh, product uh, investments. We've created a $25,000 program. Problem is we don't have enough money to help all the businesses. And in, in terms of federal additional support, uh, we've had... We've had 14.4 million in applications, roughly 1.1 million from Alberta. We've been able to approve about 300,000 in programs for Alberta businesses so far. Uh, so there's a big gap in what we can actually do versus what we have in resources. But the point is we've created that short-term cash liquidity issue. We're also trying to continue to work with uh, federal loan programs to, uh, I guess, uh, lengthen the amortization and, and, and soften the repayment structuring of those things like the business credit availability program that some of the larger businesses are applying for. Our businesses simply need more patient capital. There's no way it's going to be able to pay back with for the first 12 months. And the amortization of five years is just simply not going to work for some of the larger operations. Uh, we don't even know if we can rebuild the cash flow for on, on the international side for three years. So it's a very risky situation for some of those businesses to add that on. So these are the kind of things we're tackling for our Indigenous businesses. Next slide. Hi, we're the Josie family, and we own Josie's Old Crow Adventures. We want to say Massey Cho to the ITAC for the COVID relief grant. We were one of 94 businesses in Canada to receive a grant. We started our business almost three years ago, and we prided ourselves in never going into debt. We started small, and we grew. This was a big year for us. We had been expanding to summer tours and started offering all-inclusive packages. Those steps had really increased our revenues and bookings, and we were gearing up for our best year yet. Then COVID happened, and our community was shut down to tourists. We refunded all our tours and deposits for the spring and summer season. 
We usually use our spring revenues to replace our gear that gets worn out or damaged, but with no revenues, it was looking bleak. As we said before, we pride ourselves in never going into debt. With no provinces of when the world would reopen, we couldn't guarantee we would be able to pay back a loan. So many of the loan programs weren't a good fit for our business. The iTech grant was perfect for us. We thought we might have to close our business and find other work to pay the bills and feed our dog team during the pandemic. Now we can purchase a pallet of dog kibble, replace harnesses and dog lines, and we can increase our marketing and work on improving guest experiences. This grant has enabled us to not only keep our regular employees working, but also hire a couple casual workers that we would have brought on to help with tours this season. Merci Cho to the Government of Canada and the Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada for saving our business during the COVID pandemic. I hope many more businesses are able to be supported and saved like ours was. Merci Cho from Josie's Old Crow Adventures. So just wanted to share briefly, we'll, we'll wrap this up. I just want to share that, that, you know, it is a really important perspective from us at Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada. The short-term cash liquidity issue has not gone away. We're pushing hard. And I mean, uh, as we can all appreciate, those are reality checks for us in our world. Uh, and without these in grants, that's another example. A lot of our businesses, they can't just go get loans at banks and traditional bank financing. Uh, the community has to sign. There's all sorts of regulatory issues around that. So we're doing our best to help at least uh, rebuild for the future. And hopefully that gives you some context. So thank you very much. Here And, you know, thank you as well for being a great strategic partner of TIAC as we uh, go forward uh, now as in the last few years. Um, I also uh, want to uh, have the pleasure now to introduce Cookie Boyle, who's the Executive Director of Global Content for Destination Canada, to give a presentation on the work that DC is doing during the crisis. Thank you very much. And, uh, and Keith, those were beautiful videos, so thank you for sharing. Uh, the last time I had the pleasure of being at a town hall was in Edmonton alongside uh, Keith and Charlotte and Royce. And so um, I'm honored to be back virtually, at least in Alberta, uh, to speak with you today. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, indeed, we are charting a new course. We all feel that every day. Um, as the Federal Tourism Marketing Organization, our mandate uh, is threefold. One, uh, marketing, of course, for uh, to create a vibrant visitor economy. Um, two, working collabor collaboratively with our partners. And uh, three, to provide uh, research that allows us to make evidence-based decisions. So um, our mandate hasn't changed over the course of COVID, uh, but our focus certainly has, and that's to support uh, Canada's tourism sector in the coming weeks, months, and years with research and a dom domestic focus program. Um, so I'm here to today to talk to you about some of the insights and the plans that we have to share. Um, and note that this, um, while I am presenting in English, if you would like to see this presentation in French, please reach out, it is available. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so um, over the next few minutes, I'll be uh, giving you an overview of how we are facing uh, the current challenge uh, based on what we know today. Next slide. Uh, uncharted territory, if ever there was um, a time <laughs> to be in uncharted territory, as I mentioned a year ago, I was in Edmonton um, meeting with uh, some of you and none of us could see this coming. Uh, so as we are facing um, the first pandemic in this smartphone, always connected age, uh, we are uh, pivoting to respond to these challenges. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so Shelley uh, went through some of the phases of recovery and I'll just speak very quickly to these. What I want to do is highlight uh, the stages. So we have stage one, hyperlocal to local. Um, stage two, we anticipate regional uh, travel coming back. Stage three will be interprovincial, uh, then tentatively international and national. So as the national marketing organization, this is how we um, perceive tourism to return. And I just wanted to um, uh, 
uh, highlight those stages because we have research that aligns with that. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so there are a few elements that we're looking at. This is the demand side. So this is the uh, pre-pandemic um, domestic demand uh, for tourism. So if you think of the intra-provincial at the bottom, $33 billion, 49% of uh, tourism revenue was driven by intra-provincial travel and 67, so two thirds of our um, tourism revenue was driven by domestic travel. So we are confident that by focusing on uh, domestic travel, when the signals allow us to, that we'll be able to uh, drive and inspire recovery. Next slide. Um, so that was on the demand side. This is on the supply side. So this map shows us all the regions across Canada where um, uh, we are dependent on uh, tourism for employment. So the red dots are those areas where uh, more than 20% uh, of employment is um, based on tourism. So as you can see, when we start with the hyper-local and local focus, um, up north, uh, there are more challenges because they haven't got a large uh, drive um, market to rely on. The good news is, however, at the bottom in southern Canada, uh, there are more than, there are about 800 communities that do have a drive market. Um, and so hyper-local and local marketing can uh, support and inspire uh, visitation to some of these. Next slide, please. Uh, so we had talked about the demand side, which is two thirds of uh, tourism driven by domestic uh, demand. And we talked about supply um, in that map that I showed you. Um, the other element that we are monitoring, which is really important is community sentiment. So I had highlighted earlier those five phases um, in the recovery and this aligns with our research. So the first phase is um, understanding whether people, resident sentiment about welcoming people uh, from other communities near me. So that's phase one, the hyper-local and the local from other parts of my province, uh, regional, then other parts of Canada, from the US and then beyond the US. So we do this research every week. Um, it's available on destination.com, destinationcanada.com and, uh, and it's updated and it really shows the spirit and the welcome of people in their communities to visitors. Uh, next slide. So this was the, these are the latest numbers, and I'll just focus on Alberta. Um, so if you look at the welcome and the willingness to welcome visitors in Alberta as of last week, almost half uh, Albertans are willing to welcome people from communities near them. Uh, from other parts of Alberta, 38%. From other parts of Canada, now we're getting down to 27%. And if you just go over one province to BC where I am, that drops to 12%. So you can see the volatility and resident sentiment in welcome, welcoming visitors. Alberta has the greatest appetite for welcoming Americans and international travelers, while British Columbia uh, has the least. So uh, we monitor this every week um, and it's an important part of the work that we're doing uh, to align our marketing because of course we um, don't want to be um, driving local visitation unless the communities are welcoming visitation. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here specifically is Alberta. Again, this uh, research goes back just to last week. If you look on the very right hand, uh, the red, so that is um, those who strongly agree with these statements that they would welcome people from other communities near them. So 12% in Alberta, and again, it drops down to 5% from countries beyond the US. Um, so this is some of the research that we're monitoring for signals, uh, both for uh, recovery and also marketing. Next slide. Um, some more of the research. Uh, we're very focused on signals. Um, this is a unique time, and we need to understand when we can turn that marketing back on and have it accepted and effective. Um, so here's a list of some of the research that is available. Again, if you go to destinationcanada.com or sign up for our DC News, you'll see some of the research that's available to you. Next slide. 
Uh, and so our challenge um, is to mitigate the impact of um, COVID and bring the industry together so we are working collectively and collaboratively uh, to develop a campaign that is flexible um, and can respond to change that we cannot predict um, and also has a sense of who we want to be uh, when COVID-19 is uh, in our rearview mirror, which we hope is soon. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so what is our approach? Our approach is um, to work with our partners to create a campaign uh, that drives domestic travel. Next slide. Um, and so with this, we have been uh, working with partners such as um, our good friends at Travel Alberta. Um, we're creating a new model for our marketing and in the, through that, we'll be reducing duplication and therefore getting the most of our marketing dollars. Next slide. Uh, what we're looking to accomplish uh, is we want to have communities welcome visitors. So that's why it's important to monitor uh, resident sentiment. We want visitors who do uh, travel to know the experiences that they can uh, have. We of course want to inspire them to spend money with local tourism businesses. We want to inspire travel to other communities within uh, Canada and all while uh, managing and understanding the health and safety guidelines. Next slide, please. Uh, so how are we doing this again? Um, we have never had to work more with our partners, more collectively, more uh, collaboratively and more effectively. Um, so our role will be um, uh, leading a domestic program uh, interprovincially when the time is right. And before then, we'll be supporting uh, local um, marketing. Next slide, please. Um, so again, the beginning of our program, local and regional travel, uh, will be supporting the provinces with their um, uh, community-based marketing. And then when the time is right and when the signals allow, we'll be leading a national marketing program that will inspire Canadians to travel interprovincially. And then beyond that, we'll be um, building on that marketing program to work with uh, US and international markets to inspire our international visitors to return. Next slide, please. Uh, with this domestic program, we have some guiding principles. Again, so all our partners are aligned. Um, and some of that is ensuring that the work that we are creating um, ladders up to a national message. So the work that we'll be developing in the coming months um, will lead to a, um, a message that is inspiring and builds on the Canada for Glowing Hearts brand. Next slide, please. And so it was about a year ago uh, that we actually launched the brand Canada for Glowing Hearts and, uh, and it celebrates the spirit and the values of who we are as Canadians. And so it's based on this new brand, Canada for Glowing Hearts, that will be inspiring travel interprovincially across the country and welcoming travelers from outside the country when the time is right. Next slide. Uh, so again, the work that we're doing, um, we're not replacing any local campaigns. Um, instead, what we're doing is working with our provincial partners to uh, celebrate interprovincial travel and build pride in Canadians to explore their own country now more than ever. Next slide. Um, so again, Canada for Glowing Hearts, we know that we have a brand and a position that celebrates community, the spirit of the people, uh, and the land that we call home. And so we know that working with our brand and building on that, we can inspire domestic travel uh, this summer and beyond to um, rebuild our economy and uh, make it more resilient than ever. Thank you very much. All right. <clears throat> wow. Thank you very much, Cookie. That was amazing. Uh, and great, great to see the amount of work that's been packaged up so quickly um, by so many leaders in our industry. Uh, great panel today. Um, but now is really the time where the rubber is going to hit the road because this is the time for everyone there to now 
uh, have a chance to ask your questions directly to the panel. Uh, many of you have submitted questions in advance. We thank you for that. Many of you are submitting questions. I see the Q&A tab down below. Please use that. Uh, get your questions in and well, I'll do my best to keep us moving, keep us focused. Uh, panelists, I'd ask you to keep your answers crisp and short. Uh, think uh, elevator pitch or TV soundbite. Um, and uh, let's get into it. Um, to start the conversation, you know what, let's start at a high level. Charlotte, I'm going to pick on you. Um, <laughs> you know, this, is, this has got to be the question you've heard, I don't know, maybe 36 million times since this thing has started. Uh, what is TIAG doing right now to help the government understand the urgency of the situation, uh, how dire the situation is, and, and that they need to pay attention to our sector? So <clears throat> we've been, thank you for that question, and it's, it's an all-important question, of course. Um, since the very beginning of this, we have been in daily contact with officials at the highest level in government, uh, including uh, the finance minister's office, our own tourism minister, um, ADMs, de deputy ministers, but it's not just telling them what the problem is it's it's showing them what the problem is and of course there's been an, a, there's been a lot of research done uh, so we've gone to many sources they are they are acutely aware of what the situation is um, you know McKinsey group has done um, a very good job of showing how dire the situation is unless there is more uh, support. And, and this research was actually funded by the Canadian government. So we point them back to this information, of course, and say, this is a situation we need to do something quickly. Now we know that the support mechanisms that are in place right now are, are um, you know, they're short-term uh, stop gaps. They were not meant to be long term. Having said that, we think that the wage subsidy needs to be extended even further. Um, and as, as I talked about earlier, we are launching a robust plan for recovery next week with the federal government. We've already been socializing that with some key folks in the federal government. Um, and there are a number of, of pillars included there, um, one of the top things that we need to do is ensure that we're gonna be able to, um, to, to encourage uh, Canadians to feel safe. Um, and co consumer safety is gonna be key. And of course that comes at a cost. Uh, we need to be able to put protocols in place and, and there are costs involved with that. And so we are asking for tax credits, funding, all sorts of grants. Um, so there's a number of things that Canada can do to support the restart of the visitors' economy, and um, and I think it's also going to require some uh, work coordination with the provinces and the municipalities. This is not just a uh, a one-stop deal. It's uh, of course starts with the federal government, but the provinces have to be involved. And, and we have to have collaboration and cooperation across the board. So we are continuing to work on this. It is a daily task, believe me. Um, and, uh, and we're not gonna stop until this is over, obviously. And we are here to support you. Uh, we continue to have those calls on a daily and a weekly basis with those decision makers, showing them the data. Please uh, respond to our surveys because when we show them data, and specific examples, it helps us be able to, to actually make change. All right, so here loud and clear, we, we all need to participate, we need to fill in the surveys, uh, because these are, these are truly gonna be data driven discussions. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm gonna pivot here now and say, you know, Keith, you, you and uh, your work for the Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada, um, you know, you're, you're uh, your team feels all of the things that the rest of us feel, but then there's an amplification because of unique circumstances. You know, share with us or maybe enlighten us a bit on how this has affected uh, the Indigenous operators, in, specifically in Alberta. 
Well, I mean, yeah, I spoke, I mean, uh, right now we've got 45 applicants for the stimulus grant program and every single one of those applicants, some of them are export ready, some of them are market ready, some of them are more just basically only been in operation the last few years, but they all share one common reality. If we don't find short-term cash solutions, real cash and not necessarily loans, uh, you know, at least half of those businesses are going to go bankrupt. So that's the practical reality. So from an operator perspective, it's a process, and, and what I'm, what I think that we keep advocating for, is, you know, and I can assure everyone on the Zoom call that, you know, Charlotte and the TIAC team and Tourism HR Canada and the Hotels Association were on those calls collectively. Of course, Charlotte does a lot of other advocacy work, but the reality is we are all on the same page saying there needs to be serious stimulus cash injection for Indigenous tourism. We specifically asked for 557 million in flexible cash support to save at least a core group of our businesses in the country. We know we're gonna lose businesses. We've already lost 100. And in Alberta, we've lost probably about 20 already uh, that have just, they're maybe not gone bankrupt, they're just insolvent and they've just closed shop. They're starting to sell their assets. So right. it's having a real on the ground challenge. Uh, so it's, it's a short term cash need we have to do to survive this or we won't be able to rebuild very easily anything domestically or internationally from an indigenous perspective. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these businesses are on reservation and, you know, I think a lot of us don't really understand uh, or have a full grasp of the fact that uh, on res there's different rules and, and you know, the banking system has a whole different way of uh, applying there. Uh, has, has it, uh, have you felt like this crisis has allowed you to um, almost educate a lot of people, including government agencies on, on how challenging that can be? Yeah. Cause there's a, there, it has actually. So there has been some positive and that's been one of the positives. We've spent a lot of time with export development Canada and the other, you know, the, the administrators of loan programs to explain to them, you're, you're just cause you contract BMO and RBC and CIBC. Those are great. That's important. But for on reserve, it's a complete different set of tax realities and loan structuring. So we have many businesses that operate on reserve, but the reality is the banks won't lend it to a business on reserve unless the chief and council or the governance structure approves that loan. And then they take the risk of that. Well, that's not like, that's just not reasonable or is it a, a way to deal with a crisis? And we have many nations in Alberta as well that have completely shut the, the, the nation off outside, whatever the province of Alberta decides to do, they're going to stay shut for a lot longer because they're worried about community safety. So those businesses in that situation, First of all, they're facing access to loan program challenges, first of all. And second of all, they will, most of them won't be able to rebuild till after 2020. So 2020 is a write-off. So, you know, it is really quite uh, enlightening, I think, for a lot of us. And you mentioned about how those communities are closing. And it, but it's not uh, just because, uh, you know, they're not the only people that are closing. Like, it's like different segments and different provinces, different regions all are going to have different needs and requirements and related to their comfort. And I think Charlotte mentioned earlier in her comments about how safety is really got to be the number one message for Canadians. Um, you know, as we're looking to start breaking this thing out into the different regions across the country, um, I think the research is going to continue to play a, an important part. I, I'm going to shift over to Cookie now and, and ask her, like, I know that DC sorry, Destination Canada, I live in a world of acronyms, um, you know, has have really done an amazing, has always done amazing research, but we used to have to pay for it. Um, I'm not sure that everybody knows that it's free right now, and I'm not sure that they also know how to access and use that. So maybe share with, say, the small business, medium business, where, where's the value for them and how do they access it? Yeah, thank you, great question. Um, indeed, it used to be uh, research that uh, was supported by our uh, partners, but uh, we have absorbed that cost. So it is research that is available uh, to the industry. Please visit destinationcanada.com um, and uh, check out our research tab there. You can also sign up for DC News and uh, you will be reminded of updated um, research that we have. You can also follow us on Twitter um, and on the consumer side at Explore Canada on Instagram. All right, well, there you have it. So now we're taking that data. Man, uh, this is great on the video. I'm going to pivot over to Shelly okay, on my other side. Shelly, what is Travel Alberta doing with that research? 
Thanks, Dave. So we are working really closely with Destination Canada on the consumer sentiment um, research. We are um, working collaboratively on that, which I think is, is critical in forming plans for all of us as uh, travel permits to restart our visitor economy. We're also conducting some of our own uh, research in the province as well, engaging with tourism businesses. We have done our first survey, which we've gotten some preliminary results on, and we want to continue to touch base with operators in the coming months as well. We know initially that 33% of the businesses indicated that they may have to close permanently. Um, that, of course, is a concern for us, and that's why we have looked at some of our programs and where we can help support um, through our cooperative investment, which will be a grant program this year, and really helping to, to leverage that and provide some sustainability hopefully for businesses but to your point research will be key all right you know what i think we all can agree that the research and you know previous research led us to here in alberta a 10-year tourism strategy that tourism strategy was delivered um, by travel alberta up to the minister i believe it was uh, january 30th um and that was a 10-year we're going to build out to 20 million I'm going to go to Darren now with the Tourism Industry Association of Alberta and, and just say, you know, that was all pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. you know, Darren, when you think about it now, I mean, there's some really great work going in there. But what, what is it that we need to do now? Do you think that that plan is still relevant uh, on the short to long term? And what, does, uh, what role does the industry and does TIA play in uh, looking at that and driving the process forward? A uh, great question. Uh, thank you for that, Dave. Uh, I still think it's going to be incredibly relevant whenever it comes out because somewhere in all of our challenges remain some of the structural impediments to moving investment into the province, to creating new uh, product development opportunities. So there's a lot of these things that are longer term in nature that are relevant that move uh, irrespective of COVID happening. What COVID has done, of course, is illuminate the fact that there are a number of vulnerable businesses that move from season to season that are going to have some real challenges getting out as a result of not having much of a summer season. So I think this really draws attention to the fact that during a week like Tourism Week, we need to advocate as an industry. It's not enough, I think, to exist as the fourth largest economic sector in the province and to be liked, which we are as an industry. It's a time to remind government that we need to be respected for the contribution we make and that we can make going forward. We're green, we're sustainable, renewable. We're one of the best economic levers to pull coming out of this crisis. And I think it's go time now and Tourism Week is a platform to remind all those on the call to have those conversations with your local politicians and talk about the opportunities that are presenting in tourism. This is as main street as it gets in terms of industry development. It matters more than ever. All right, great message. So when we're done, everybody call your MP, call your MLA. Let's get some action going. <clears throat> in the interim, uh, you know, Charlotte, there's a lot of uh, associations and, and members of associations listening. You know, what, what can we as industry and as associations do to help elevate uh, the TIAC government asks that are coming out next week? Sorry, I was muted there. Um, so we, we are obviously working with a number of other organizations. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be relaunching our push politics tool um, and inviting people to go on and uh, and uh, connect with their MPs directly, and that is a great place to send the message. Uh, but meanwhile, we are working with all, um, all of the other national and regional associations. And as Keith mentioned earlier, we're constantly, we're in contact uh, every week, several times a week. Uh, so it's important for us to all come together, speak with one voice, make sure that, uh, that we're all sending the same mes message to Ottawa and to provincial governments, of course, for collaboration. But um, this is something that's ongoing and, and that we continue to do on a regular basis. All right, well, make sure that we're all rallying around some of those key statements. Yeah. Suggestions that, that are gonna allow our industry to uh, come out of this thing. Um, you know, I, I think uh, one of the questions that has come up, uh, we got a question from, uh, that's come up through the Q&A uh, from Bob Williams. I believe that's from Callaway Park. Hi, Bob. Uh, and it's a question for Charlotte and Tyak. <clears throat> and it's um, a question about, uh, is the federal government considering uh, stimulus funding for the tourism industry 
um, specifically some capital stimulus. Is there a discussion taking place uh, on long-term recovery plan? And who is leading that, that discussion? I think you touched on it a little bit in your presentation, yep. but maybe expand out a bit. I, you know, I, I had every reason to believe that the federal government is going to put a program together um, that's going to be related to recovery. There's no question about it. Um, and we've had a lot of discussions with government officials on this. At the end of the day, I think there are some key ministers that are very important for us to communicate with. Uh, certainly, the finance minister has an incredible role in uh, deciding where uh, the dollars are going to be spent, and that is going to be a key focus for us. And of course, I'm getting support from our tourism minister on this and officials at, uh, in the prime minister's office. I have every reason to believe that the government has to do something. Uh, we've had indication that recovery is a separate uh, step in, um, obviously, in, in, in this whole process dealing with COVID. And we know that, as I said earlier, the, the measures in place at, at this time are mostly temporary, um, but we are pushing very hard uh, on a recovery plan, which is going to be unveiled next week. And of course, that does include capital uh, spending and, uh, and support for a number of things. So uh, stay tuned for that, but we are definitely um, going to be pushing for that recovery package. And, and I'm confident that we will get something from the federal government for sure. All right. Well, I, you know, we look forward to hearing the ask and probably more, more we're interested in, in seeing what the follow-up is that from the government. Um, I got yeah. another question here. Now this one's going to go out to the entire panel. Uh, so I don't get to pick on you individually anymore. Um, so this is a question from uh, Liz Ferguson. And uh, her question is, we all talk about opportunities for a reset on a number of fronts. For tourism, um, isn't this an opportunity to, um, as my phone's going, sorry about that. Uh, isn't this an opportunity to generally embrace the principles of sustainable tourism? And please comment. So I'm looking to see who may want to tackle that. And, you know, Darren, why don't I, I send it off to you first? <clears throat> great. Uh, thank you. I think it's a great question. Uh, and I think it's one of the endearing opportunities for tourism going forward is, is that uh, sustainability really is the underpinning of our industry. Look, uh, when we look to uh, legacy investments that are made in 20 years out, what we want on the landscape, uh, these are businesses that have to uh, meet the triple bottom line. I mean, our commitment to economic, social, and environmental sustainability. Uh, I think tourism is the best industry going forward to do that. Uh, part of our challenge, I think, is getting government's attention to realize this is an uh, industry of opportunity. And when we talk about whole of government approach to tourism, it's really summoning the same type of response that we have in our own businesses. I mean, operations, marketing, and finance talk to one another in support of an operational agenda. They all move in the same direction direction at the same time. We have factions within government that understand the value of tourism, but they aren't moving in alignment. So I think to move towards sustainability to grow our industry is really going to take that whole of government approach to building things. Thanks. Thanks, Darren. Anybody else want to jump in? Oh, well, just for Indigenous tourism, like we, you know, I mean, each of us are putting out, I think we just got to keep it's difficult, but even for us, it's despite my our challenges, I, I, I spoke to, um, you know, we're trying to do virtually yours. We're doing a chef cook-off. We're trying to create content so people can at least try and share and tell a positive side of the positive impacts of the work we do. So we can't lose sight of that. I mean, trust me, we're all filled with negativity. I, I see it on some of the commentary. Uh, our businesses feel it. Our communities feel it. But somehow we do have to show leadership and we all have to contribute to beyond being uh, a challenge, we have to create that we can come out of this. If we don't say we can come out of this, frankly, uh, sometimes that gets used against us in terms of policy and investments because people think, well, it's I can't recover because people are all gonna be gone anyways. So we have to also balance our approach collectively in terms of having a unified voice and sharing really positive, like we need to 
be attractive as a sector, no matter what. And I mean, I'm not here to lecture anyone, but that's why for ITAC, if you want to look, we, we create videos about the positive impacts of stimulus grants. I showed you one. We're doing a lot of that kind of collective intel because it's we we can't it can't be all doom and gloom. We have to find a way positive way forward. All right, and I know a couple others wanted to jump in. You know what, Shelly, I got one for you right now. Oh, okay. But because we got a few more questions, we're running short on time. We want to get as many in as we possibly can. So, uh, for Shelly, um, with tourism decimated in every part of the province, <clears throat> including the hot spots, but what is the travel Alberta going to do to ensure that the lesser known regions aren't overlooked? It's a great question, Dave, and um, it's going to be one that's critically important this year in how we work in collaboration with um, all of our destination marketing organizations across the province to ensure that we are driving visitation um, to, to all regions. Um, that'll be critically important, and that is something that we are looking at incorporating into the Worth the Wait campaign that we are launching, again, from more of an inspirational um, perspective, but then working very closely with a variety of different communities and our destination marketing organizations to help demonstrate um, what businesses are open and, and uh, waiting to receive customers and, um, and stimulate new activity in those communities for them as appropriate. So for us right now, we're really working to see what businesses are open, what hours uh, and things have been adjusted accordingly so that we can start to, um, to basically drive some visitation back where appropriate to those communities and businesses that are open. All right, <clears throat> that's reassuring to hear. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little hoarse, but timing's perfect. I got uh, time for one more question. And then following that, I'm gonna give uh, each of the panel 30 seconds for your wrap up. So think about that 30 second elevator speech on how you wanna end your town hall. <clears throat> this is a question for Travel Alberta in DC. Uh, with so many tourism businesses, uh, small businesses struggling to stay afloat. Um, how can Travel Alberta in DC help support these businesses and ensure they don't slip through the cracks? Let's go to Cookie first on this one. Uh, thank you. Um, it is top of mind for us. So we are working uh, with the provinces uh, to support uh, where they can uh, with the hyper-local uh, marketing originally just to support people uh, going to their uh, local and regional um, uh, destinations. And then we'll be um, uh, building on that as we move into uh, interprovincial travel. Shelley, do you want to build on that? Sure, um, I'll just add to that. So definitely working with our sole proprietors is, is really important. We recognize the challenges that they are facing. We know that not all of them have qualified for a lot of the federal uh, programs uh, that have been out there. So that's where I would encourage them to um, look at our cooperative investment program, in particular around the product experience development side of things, as we've really modified that program right now to help them implement in their business whether it's you know, new signage as a result of health protocols or things that they need to change in their business to help meet current guidelines as a result of COVID-19, we want to be there to help support you more than ever right now. So I encourage you to um, go onto our industry website, um, let us know, touch base with us. Let's discuss what kind of um, challenges you're having in your business. Um, as many of you know, we have regional represent, uh, representatives throughout the province. We are here to work with you and support you through your uh, repositioning of whatever kind of product or experience you offer, as well as providing you with marketing support. All right, that's very good to hear. All right, unfortunately, we're running down the clock here. So we're gonna do our rapid fire 30 second finale and I'm uh, just looking for who looks the most nervous. Uh, and I'm going to uh, go with Keith because you don't look nervous at all. I knew uh, you were going to pick me. I just knew it. <laughs> Give me 30 seconds, pal. Set, set the tone. Hey, I just want to say to everyone, I mean, we're all in this together. I mean, uh, for us at Indigenous Tourism, uh, we're, uh, we're in this with all the, the broader tourism sector. I think it's up to us, though, right now. We need to show strong, strong strategic vision and leadership. We have a recovery plan of our own coming out. Uh, it'll be out on Monday. Uh, it's a four-year vision of how we know we're going to need to rebuild community safety and all ongoing sustainability. And all of us need to advocate. I mean, now's the time to talk to your MPs 
uh, especially federally right now, is really important. And I think uh, all of us have to own that and let's tell them positive sides and the importance of our sector. So thanks for having the Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada on here today. All right, great. Well, and I'm going to go next to the next industry, direct industry rep. Uh, Darren, uh, what's your 30 seconds that you want everybody to hear? Really, what I'd like to say is thank you. Thank you for your leadership in the times of adversity. Thank you for your hope. Hope is what's going to get us all through. And tourism is a, an industry of experience. And we need to share experiences with people again to get our economy moving. So tourism is really going to be the backbone. I think of coming out of this difficult time. So I just want to say thank you to all of you for persevering, for sharing your stories, for sharing your hardships, allowing all of the partner organizations on this call to be a part of that process with you. Uh, share with us your success stories, your ongoing challenges. We're all here to help you. And again, use Tourism Week in any way you can to popularize the challenges and opportunities for our industry with local elected officials. That's really the opportunity this week. So that would be my challenge for you. Thank you. My goodness, Darren, it sounds like you're running for office, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Cookie in DC. Thank you so much for your support, these town halls. Uh, 30 seconds. Uh, 30 seconds, thank you. Um, I'll allude to uh, Liz, I didn't get a chance to answer your question earlier, but know that we're focusing in the, um, on marketing and our efforts on uh, celebrating the community DNA to make sure that uh, tourism benefits both visitors and residents. Um, so that's uh, that's essential in the work that we're doing. And please, I invite everyone to visit DestinationCanada.com, sign up for DC News, um, keep up to date with the uh, research that is being uh, presented. And, uh, and I look forward to seeing you at a future town hall. All right, thank you so much, Cookie. And now, you know, our great host uh, and, uh, you know, Alberta leader, Shelley, uh, 30 seconds, what do we need to know? I want to say thank you to all of our national partners for participating today. Um, you've clearly outlined and I think we all recognize that collaboration right now is the key to our success moving forward. Travel Alberta has an excellent working relationship with all of the partners here um, that are involved. We're here to share resources, tools and information with our industry partners. Um, be of assistance in any way. We're all here collectively to work together to make this happen. And if there's a country that can pull it out uh, together collectively, I think it is going to be Canada. It's our strength, it's our resiliency, and it's our, our, our hospitable nature um, that will uh, help elevate this and, and have our spirit kind of reside overall. Great. Thank you so much for those inspiring words, Shelley. And last but certainly not least, um, you know, uh, Charlotte Bell in, in Ottawa, 30 seconds. What, what do we need to know? All right, thank you, Dave. Um, I also want to say thank you to everybody who's on this panel. We are all partners in this and working together. But I want to thank everyone who joined the call, actually, and thank all of you who provide us with the information that we need uh, to support you also in Ottawa in our advocacy. This is a time when we need to come together and everyone else has said it and, and, and I absolutely believe it. We're not gonna get through this unless we continue to work together. And it's interesting when you think about all of the negative things that are happening to us right now, the one positive I think that's come out of this whole um, situation is the fact that I think we always work together, but I think we've come together even more closely as a result of this crisis. And I hope that that's something that leads us into the future also. So I would say um, there are not a lot of silver linings in terms of what the industry is going through right now, but this is certainly a time when coming together, working together has been crucial and it's gonna be crucial for us to continue to do that. So thank you to all of you and, uh, and let's keep doing this and I agree. Um, if anybody can do it, Canada can do it, and we'll do it together. So thank you, and thank you, Dave, also for chairing today. Oh, you're very welcome. It's been uh, a new experience for me. <laughs> been the Zoom th chair bit, uh, but you know, unfortunately, uh, we've run out of time. And I wanted to thank each and every one of you on the panel today uh, for, and and actually everybody out there. Uh, at one point, I saw we had almost 300 people join us. Uh, thank, you, thank you for joining 
on to the call today to better understand what's going on. And thank you for those that submitted your questions. Um, those that we were not able to answer, uh, they will be submitted to the panel. You're not off the hook yet, folks. Uh, they will be submitted to the panel and they will endeavor to answer those for you. And we'll make sure that we have those uh, uh, submitted to you directly back to you by email. Uh, once again, thank you to the uh, TIAC and to the Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada, Tourism Industry Association of Alberta, uh, Destination Canada, and Travel Alberta for putting on this session. And a big thank you to all of the participants. Before we say goodbye, um, with the support from the, Can the Government of Canada Canadian Experience Fund, CEF, TIAC has launched a new program, um, uh, Elevating Canadian Experiences. This is a how-to workshop series focused on tourism recovery through culinary and shoulder season development. The program has launched a series of online workshops across Canada uh, to provide capacity building and support for tourism businesses in developing shoulder slash winter seasons and culinary as part of recovery and resilience. Visit elevatingcanadianexperiences.ca for more information. Thank you all very much and thank you for your time today. In times of crisis like this, Canadians have been coming together like never before. But in this global context, tourism industries have taken the brunt of the shock. Economies will recover and people will travel again. And we want you to be ready to welcome them when it's time. To get back on our feet, Canada needs to support its tourism industry, an industry with a presence from coast to coast to coast, and traditionally representing nearly one in 10 Canadian jobs. Canada is full of untapped potential and is usually one of the world's most visited destinations during the summer months. But with only 1% of visitor activities being winter-based, there is so much of Canada left untouched. In our workshops, you will learn to grow culinary and seasonal opportunities in your own backyard. During peak times, Ontario, Quebec, British Columbia and Alberta account for 87% of Canada's tourism employment, with food tourism playing a crucial role, especially during times of uncertainty. We have the opportunity to work on building and strengthening Canada's tourism industry to recover jobs and resuscitate the economy. The Tourism Industry Association of Canada proudly presents the Elevating Canadian Experiences Workshop Program, the how-to workshop series to recover Canadian tourism through culinary and shoulder season development. For joining us for today's town hall. Thank you to all our panelists and to Dave McKenna for leading the discussion today. I'd also like to thank our town hall series sponsors, Meetings Means Business Canada, Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada, WestJet, and Air Canada. Take care and stay well.